where Sergeant Bell left off in last season uh, was we wrapped up the Wheatley case as far as, you know, getting him arrested and bringing him before a judge, him and his children, actually. So that was kind of a win for us. Uh, and then, unfortunately, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Morales, he he traded, <laughs> he, uh, he switched sides on us and unfortunately, uh, Bell had to shoot him, which was uh, very heartbreaking. Um, so that's, that's really where we left off and Angela Wheatley was kind of fighting for her life at the end of that. So picking up next season, it's three months later. Uh, there's definitely been some changes. Belle's wife, Denise, gave birth to their son, Jack. So they're new parents and trying to figure that out. And it's been three months since the Wheatley uh, um, arrest happened. So we pick up seeing uh, where that's headed. And then Belle and Stabler are on to another case. And Stabler is undercover and Belle is you know, trying to navigate getting the information that they need to take down this new, this new crime family. Sergeant Bill Brewster used to be Sergeant Bell's sergeant before she became a sergeant. Um, and they have not the best history together. Uh, Bell feels like he uh, is always kind of on her uh, for no reason. And so now they're forced to work together. His task force, which is in narcotics, and her task force, which is organized crime, is forced to work together to take down this new crime family. And they are constantly bumping heads. <laughs> I think Bell and Stabler are, work together really, really well. They have built a mutual respect for one another as colleagues. Um, and now that Stabler is going undercover, it kind of changes their dynamic. They are still partners, but he's kind of on the inside while she's still, you know, in the task force uh, and in the office. And, you know, at the end of the day, she is still his boss. So there's definitely times in the season where they bump heads because, as you guys know, Belle already lost an undercover last season. So she's very, you know, worried about making sure that Stabler stays safe and that she doesn't lose, you know, another colleague on her watch. Because there's so many storylines within the show, I think it's something that's gonna keep the audiences very much engaged on the edge of their seats, not knowing what's gonna happen to the characters uh, that they love because there's so many overlapping, um, so many layers to the stories and so many overlapping dynamics and relationships that are gonna come into the story. So I'm really, really excited. Oh, it's so fun. I actually just finished um, filming a crossover episode and it's we're all one big family. So it, it felt great to go over into the SVU world and uh, get to meet Ice Teagues. I haven't met him yet and to work with him and Mariska and, and Peter and Kelly and the rest of the and the rest of the crew is fantastic. So I think the more we cross over, um, the more our worlds blend and the audiences will be able to see that this is the whole city of New York um, and that we're gonna take over Thursday nights. I think people keep coming back to watch Law & Order, whether it be SVU or Organized Crime, is because I think the characters that they're seeing are people that they know or people that they can relate to in some way. I know a lot of our viewers um, unfortunately have been victims of sex crimes and things like that, which I think really keeps them um, um, wanting to come back to watch SVU and see people receiving justice for the things that have happened to them. And I think with organized crime, you know, there's so much in this world that we're unable to control um, and so many things happening in this world. When you can see people that you can relate to, that you feel are good people who are, are, are trying to do good things and help people, I think it's something that, that you want to watch. 
our writers do an amazing draw, a job of keeping the drama uh, going <laughs> to keep people to want to come back to see what's going to happen. And they write really flushed out characters uh, where, like I said, it's people that you know, so they can um, relate to and root for, you know, people like Belle and Denise to have, you know, a child and a loving family. Or even when it comes to the Wheatleys, like the Wheatleys were as crazy as they were. And, you know, them being the bad guys, they were people that, that audiences wanted to watch. And, you know, seeing the love that they have for one another, even though they were part of, you know, they were part of a crime family. Uh, so yeah, I think it's, we just have all the ingredients of good television.